countries of the world are increasingly looking for the ways to realize their competitive advantage. And this, uh, in one hand, uh, on the one hand, takes the form of uh, looking for free trade areas, free trade arrangements, but they are also looking to the funds to institutionalize this kind of arrangement. That may explain, in one hand, the emergence of uh, international organizations which are focusing on regional integration, but there are also new reasons, or old reasons, we could say, like security, political cooperation, that are also pushing in the same direction. Hence, it's not surprising that we have this kind of organizations growing in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, and I don't think this trend is going to be stopped in the near future. I think that the Global Academy responds very nicely to two different kinds of necessities. In the one hand, uh, people working in international organizations, uh, they need the necessity to uh, retrain and to acquire new knowledge related to the policy areas in which they work. But it is also a very good instrument for putting in connection what is being researched by uh, doctoral and postdoctoral students and the uh, requirements on this kind of this uh, international research. As for, for future developments, I would say that the Global uh, Academy should perhaps increase the level of specialization, but this of course means that we will need to acquire a very large uh, size to target uh, the very different areas in which it is now providing expertise and training.